Excel provides us the freedom of copying formulas into other cells, which makes our work easier. But one should be careful while copying formulas into other cells. Because if you don't know about absolute cell reference and relative cell reference, chances are that you may end up in trouble while dragging the formulas into other cells. In this session, I will show you how to use dollar symbol in Excel. That is how to convert a relative cell reference into absolute cell reference. There are three kinds of cell references in Excel. They are relative reference, mixed reference and absolute reference. Let's start with an example for relative reference method. I'm typing in Excel and get to cell A1. Then here at cell B6, I will make a reference to cell A1. Now I will drag this formula downwards. That is, I will copy the formula to the downward cells and then to the adjacent cells on right side. And you can see the references have changed. Cell B7 is referring to cell A2. Cell B8 is referring to cell A3. Cell B9 is referring to cell A4. The same thing happened with the adjacent cells on the right side of cell B6. Cell C6 is referring to cell B1. Cell D6 is referring to cell C1. Then cell E6 to cell B1. You may have noticed when we drag the formula downward, column index remained the same and row index changed. And when we copied the formula to the right side, row indices remained the same and column indices were modified. This reference method is called relative reference method. This is the default setting for cell references in Excel. When the column or row of a cell referred in a formula is not locked or not fixed, it is called relative reference. Again at G6, I will make a reference to cell A1. And when I drag the formula downward, the cells are retaining the value Excel and cat. That means those cells are referring to cell A1. Now, if I drag the formula to cells on right side, the cells are displaying the value 0. So it is pretty clear that the references have changed. What happened is I locked the row index with the use of a dollar symbol. In our case, the row number is 1. And I locked this row with the use of dollar symbol before the number 1. And here you can see every cell is referring to cell A1. Now if you see the formula in cell H6, that particular cell is referring to cell B1. And cell I6 is referring to cell C1. Cell J6 is referring to cell D1. When either row or column index of a cell used in a formula is locked, that reference method is called mixed reference method. Again, at cell B12, I will make a reference to cell A1. Lock the column index here. When I drag the formula downwards, you can see the cells are displaying the value 0. That is because the row indices were updated automatically. And now when I drag the formula to the right side, the cells are displaying the value Excel and get. And if you see the formula, they all are referring to cell A1. This is again mixed reference method. Earlier we logged the row index and here we logged the column index. So there are two types of mixed reference. One is fixing the row index and leaving the column index free and the other one is fixing the column index and leaving the row index free. Again for the fourth time at G12 I will make a reference to cell A1. With the use of dollar symbol I will lock both column and row indices. And now when I drag this formula to other cells they all are displaying the value Excel and can. And when we see the formula they are all referring to the cell A1. And I can use this formula anywhere in this sheet and the formula will always return the same value. When both row and column indices of cell in a formula are locked, that particular reference method is called absolute reference method. Now I will list down the references which we used here. When it is simply A1, it is relative reference. When it is A dollar symbol 1, it is mixed reference with row index locked. When it is dollar symbol A1, it is again mixed reference with column index locked. When it is dollar A dollar 1, it is absolute reference where both row and column indices are locked. F4 is the shortcut key to cycle through the four different references. At cell L14, I will make a reference to cell A1. At the formula bar, you can see I am cycling through the four different references using the key F4. I hope the concept of different reference methods is clear to you now. For better understanding, I will explain these reference methods in the context of arithmetic operations. I will create a multiplication table for the number 5. Starting from cell A3, type in 1 to 10, then 5 in cell B3, 
copy this 5 into adjacent cells then the formula for multiplication a3 into b3 copy the formula into adjacent cells now we have the multiplication table for 5 now if i want to change this table to that of 6 i should modify every cells in the column b that contain the value 5 so let's go for a better method again 1 to 10 in column e at f3 i will make a reference to g2 then again i will refer f4 to f3 that is value in the cell will be the same as that in the cell above this particular cell now i will copy this formula into the downward cells now enter the formula e3 multiplied by f3 copy the formula into the downward cells now we have the multiplication table for the number 6 now if i want to change this multiplication table into that of 7 i just need to change the value in the cell g2 and here we have the multiplication table for the updated value that is 7 then that of 8 here we have used relative reference method of excel as value in each cell is related to the cell just above that particular cell if value in any of these cells here are modified it will affect the downward cells which are linked to that particular cell so let's see a more efficient method of making this multiplication table with the use of mixed reference method again 1 to 10 in column i at j3 i will make a reference to cell k2 and i will lock the row index now copy the formula into the downward cells now i3 multiplied by j3 copy the formula into downward cells now we have the multiplication table for the number 8 change the value in cell k2 and we have the multiplication table for the number 9 the beauty of this method is even if i delete a value in any of the cells in column j say cell j6 it won't affect the values in other cells earlier when we used a relative reference method changes in a particular cell was reflected in the downward cells and here we have used mixed reference method by locking the row index as every cell in column j is referring to cell k2 changes in any of these cells won't affect the values in other rows now for generating multiplication table for a series of numbers that is from 1 to 10 1 to 10 in the cells from c15 to l15 then again 1 to 10 in the cells from a16 to a25 now the multiplication table for the number 1 for that a16 multiplied by c15 before copying the formula into downward cells i will log the row index of c15 now i will drag the formula into downward cells and now we have the multiplication table for the number 1 if i copy the formula into adjacent cell on right side the formula won't produce the desired result that is because i haven't logged the column index for the cell a16 for locking the column index i will add a dollar symbol before the column index copy the formula into downward cells then copy this formula into adjacent cells on the right side now you can see the multiplication tables for the numbers from 1 to 10 and it was generated with a single formula and the method we used is mixed reference method now the importance of absolute reference method while using vlookup function if you are new to this amazing function in excel i recommend you to watch my video on the use of vlookup function here we have the database of a set of employees if i want to retain some details related to five random employees salary for example i will use vlookup function let's extract the details related to employee code x and c1 use vlookup lookup value here it is x and c1 in g5 then range a3 to e131 then column index then false for returning an exact match copy the formula into the next cell here we have to return the salary and for that column index needs to be updated now we have the details related to the employee code x and c1 now i will drag the formula downwards and we can try different codes here and the formula will retain details corresponding to different codes let's cross check the details for x and c21 then for x and c13 then for x and c51 it looks like there is nothing wrong with the formula as it is producing desired results but if i change the value here in cell g7 to x and c1 the formula will return an a error that is not available error again at g8 i am updating it to x and c2 again not available what happened is when i drag the formula downward the reference has changed this highlighted portion in red is the range of cells which are being referred 
and you can see the codes XNC1, XNC2, XNC3, XNC4 are not falling in the updated ranges. So when we use VLOOKUP function, it is better to log the row and column index for best results. So I will log the row and column indices with dollar symbol and will make the references absolute. Now I will copy the formula into downward cells and you can see the formula is producing desired results. Now one more practical example. This particular sheet is the final BOQ that is bill of quantities for a highway project. Now if I want to know the tax amount for each item for a particular tax percentage, let's say 18.5%, I will multiply this amount in cell C4 with the tax percentage in cell E3. Now if I drag the formula downwards without locking the row index, this is what happens. With wrong references, astronomical figures are returned. So I will make use of mixed reference method here. I will log the raw index with the use of dollar symbol. Then I will copy the formula into the downward cells. Now we have the tax amount for each item. Now I will expand the table for different tax percentage. Let's say for the upcoming years with an increase of 0.5%. Now if I copy the formula into adjacent cell, it won't produce the desired result and you know why. That is because I haven't logged the column index of the cells containing the amounts. So I will log the column index. Now I will copy the formula into downward cells, then to cells on right side. Now we have the tax amounts for each item for different tax percentage in different years. For feedback and discussions, please make use of the comment section. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. If you want to get notified at the same time when I release a video, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon.